Um, yeah, so a couple things. I know we talked about what we were talking about today, mm-hmm. but um, there are a couple things that came out today, and I was like, dog, they're really going there. Mm-hmm. First off, you, you see that? Uh, so there's an Injustice trailer uh, for the Injustice movie based off the video game. Really? And I, I, yeah, that I did not see. It came up like two. Trailer. It came out like like five hours ago. Oh like, wow! I, wow. Yeah, like, yeah, it, it it it's like it just dropped, and I was just like, "Damn, all right, all right, all right, Warner Brothers, just sneaking that out there." All right, I see you. Um, and I was like, "Damn, okay, that looks." I'm actually pretty hyped for that. Pretty hyped for that. Um, then on top of that, they also dropped another trailer. For a movie I don't think they should be making. Uh fucking The Matrix. Uh, Matrix. Yeah, yeah. And, Matrix Resurrections. Yeah. Yeah, I, I heard they were doing this. I thought they were joking because I thought that sounded retarded. Like, oh Keanu Reeves and talks about, you know, doing another Matrix movie. And I'm like, just stick with John Wick and call it a day. Like I thought they ended that story. <laughs> nope, I was wrong. Someone actually came with this shit. And it's and it's weird too, because it's like like it's weird. The the Matrix trailer is weird because it's like, yeah, we um, we're basically doing the same thing, but different. Just a little like, different, just so that we can say it's, it's the different. whole and and apparent um, like it's weird because <laughs> it's. <laughs> There's so a lot got, of things, man. There's a lot of things that are weird about it. <laughs> yeah, so like, so, I mean, they got my man Yahya uh, Abdul-Mateen to be more of and, and not and not, uh, and not Lawrence Fishburne. I mean, and, uh, and I'm like, I guess that, like, it, it's, I mean, it's fine, but it's just, it's weird because, like, everybody else look older. And Morpheus is younger, <laughs> right? So I feel I fe- I I didn't like that. Like I felt, uh, I felt it was just wrong that they couldn't get Lawrence Fishburne back, and then they have the nerve to bring back another nigga that looks like Morpheus. And I was just like, just make it a whole new dude. Like I don't want the jacket. Like give this guy yeah. a vest or something. Do, they, do what you like, did with the Oracle. Just like all right, change it up completely. Like. Don't Lawrence Fishburne me. Like, I know what Morpheus looks like. I see what y'all are trying to do. Don't do it. Y'all the nerd to bring back Keanu Reeves and or you know Neo and Trinity. Couldn't get Lawrence Fishburne, but you wanted to put a new Morpheus in there. Like, I wouldn't fucking notice. The fuck <laughs> out of here. Like and, and, and like I, I got the trailer pulled up right now. And like, like what also throws me off is that. Keanu Reeves can get away with just keeping the same haircut through all his recent movies. <laughs> this, this nigga looks like John Wick. He, he, like, he's been like, he, he's been uh, uh, from, he's been in his Bill and Ted outfit since uh, they did the, the new movie. Yeah, like, these are the same haircut, same suit, same beard. Like, I remember him um, um, and Will You Be My Maybe, he is the same outfit. I'm like, John Wick showed up, same mannerisms. And yeah. I was just like, all right, so John Wick's in the Matrix. All right, I thought we'd clear this up in the new one. And I had so many questions. So I was like, I was like, this goes back to why we greenlit, greenlight this whole thing anyway. Like, because we, the trilogy buttoned up pretty nicely. You know, um, the Matrix, people can leave, and humanity and machines. We're good. We're Gucci. People that don't want to be in the Matrix don't have to be in it. Uh, if you want to live on this cold earth, you can. But well, that ain't getting fixed. You know, but if you want to leave, you can. You know, and that's how we ended on the last movie, right? Mm-hmm. Now we got this nigga back. Um, reincarnated, apparently. <laughs> and they just said, let's just keep this nigga drugged the entire time. Just nothing but blue pills. And I'm like, yeah, he was subtle about it. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, a, it's like, it, it was like they really leaned into it. I'm, yeah, just, it's weird because I'm not. I don't know. I, I felt like the Matrix movies got away from themselves as they went on. The first one is yeah. solid. The second one was it's, like, it was alright. And then the third one was just kind of, bro, what? 
And that's how I felt about this the fourth trailer. You know, um, it is what it is. But I'm like, man, this isn't. I'm not really excited about it. And I think, and I think the other thing too is that like they have like half the trailer is like the action sequences and like the 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 wild effects and things like that. And the thing is, those wild effects were great in the original, like when yeah. they came out because they were like revolutionary. Um, no pun intended, but at the same time, <laughs> but the, the problem is that now that's all of that stuff is commonplace. So it kind of right. feels, it kind of feels like the Shinmu three game, like it came out way later than it should have. And they, and it tried to do the, a lot of the same stuff. I feel like matrix resurrections is going to be the Shinmu three of movies. Doug, what I feel like for. Like, I feel you on that because The Matrix was such a well-crafted movie. It, it, it was a game changer. Like action scenes, wardrobes, concepts, philosoph- philosophical concepts. Every movie tried to emulate that right after that. Yeah. And now this feels like it's almost a parody of itself. It feels like, hey, remember The Matrix? We're doing everything you loved again. I mean, it's cool seeing Carrie Ann Ross because you know, besides Jessica Jones. I don't really know what else she's been in besides the Matrix. Like, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, I'm on her IMDb page, and she's been doing pretty well. She's been keeping busy. I wouldn't know, but <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, I haven't heard of half of these movies. But look at she's staying employed though. Um, yeah, I mean she's been in a lot of stuff that I haven't seen, but and and, and I mean that's not like the mark of like success, but right. Um, I mean, but she's she's doing her thing, but at the same time, I'm like, I mean, oh, all right, <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. So, all right, like you're still employed. Cool, good to see you again. You know, like, I'm not mad at you. You know, so it's good to see her back. You know, um, and it's weird that I don't know. I don't. I'm not excited for this. I feel like they're going to dance around. They're gonna wear old matrix like a puppet yeah and just like and it feels oh it just feels almost disrespectful i'm looking at the comments on this video and some people are really excited about this movie um and i don't know man it's weird i thought this was a joke when they talked about it because of uh <laughs> what happened in like john wick 3 when they had Lawrence fishburne and, and uh and keanu in the same movie and it's like hey you know Matrix Four, they're in talks. I'm like, no one's that stupid. Come on now, you know. <laughs> or, or I'm like, I'm like, you could have brought Carrie into the next John Wick movie and just made a reference. You yeah, would have saved a yeah. lot more money. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. and it, it just seems weird because like now it seems like all of the other people, because because you've got Carrie Ann Moss as Trinity, and it seems like Trinity is now in the Matrix again too. So it just seems like all of these people are like. Like, I understand that they, did, they didn't, like, overthrow the machines or whatever in the Matrix. They just kind of, like, left it on, like, this cliffhanger of, like, okay, well, it's a truce. But I I, I don't know. I'm, I think the thing, only thing I'm curious about is, like, what is the story? Because that's the only yeah. thing that I'm curious about. Of, like, because cause where do you go after that and how do we end up where we are? While also treading new ground. I mean, like they, they like, like when you watch the trailer, they do the same things. You have Morpheus with the red pill, blue pill dilemma, and then you have the white, follow the white rabbit, and the Alice in Wonderland. That's the same stuff that happened in the first movie. Um, and I guess you did to set it up. I guess. I guess. But it's. I, I mean, I, I. They're not paying me to write it. I would write something completely different, but you yeah. know, they didn't ask me. But. <laughs> But, like, when you look at this, it just feels like a rehash. And on top of that, like, why bring back Carrie Ann to this this Trinity back anyway? It, I, I, I'm curious to see what they do with the story. I honestly, I just, I should know. I, I lied. I don't care. I care that they don't mess up what already came and tarnish that legacy for a cash grab. This feels like Terminator dark fate and terminator genesis and anything at terminator 3 well terminator salvation was actually 
interesting to watch. Though. Yeah, I mean, uh, we'll see. we'll see what happens. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I'm, not... I'm, I'm going to watch it eventually. I don't know that I'm going to pay money to watch it, but I'm going to watch it eventually. You know, this is a um, bargain bin. I'm drinking, sort of. I mean, I don't know who's writing this. I mean, like the <laughs> Wachowski sisters. They're they're girls now, so the the Wachowskis. The Wachowskis. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that, no, that's that's their. That, yeah, they they're the Wachowskis. Um, um. Well, that's. I mean, like, it could be a lump of coal, could be a great Christmas present. Who knows? But uh, let's talk about this. Uh, talk about this uh, injustice trailer. Oh, there was one more thing that came out. There's one more thing that came out. Um, there was a trailer, also for Spider-Man Two PS4. Yeah. Yeah. There was. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? I'm interested. To see, that was that was not the reaction I thought you were gonna ask. <laughs> uh, so, the thing is, it, it's a it's just a reveal trailer, you know. So it's not. I'm I'm excited about it. I loved the PS4 Spider Man, um, and I it like the the footage that they have is once again it's this is like cinematic footage so so i don't know if it's going to be it, it's not going to look like that in game i don't i don't think cuz everything that that we see it looks like it's um it looks like it's all just cinematic footage it's not gameplay footage yet Right. Which but Insomniac has been kind of killing it on the on the, the game front, so I trust that it's gonna be dope. But I'm not I'm not like holding my breath for it. I'm not in a rush. Especially cause, you know, I'm I I can't get a PS five. Cause, you know, the <laughs> like the moment they go on, on shelves, they're gone. So, you know. Yeah, we'll see. We will see. Because, I mean, like... Uh, oh, also, the other thing was... I Like, I, I knew that the next thing that they were going to do was was Venom and the symbiotes because they because that was where it left off in Spider-Man. I also called the fuck out of the uh, that twist that they that they had of, like, Harry not being in Europe. I was like, bro, this dude ain't studying abroad. Duck. Like, who called... Hey, pick someone pick up that phone. Because <laughs> I fucking called it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was uh, yeah, that was very clearly uh, it was very clearly choreographed. But um, and yeah, I knew that you know Venom was going to be the kind of the the, the focus. The symbiote was going to be a focus of this one. I don't know how they're going to do it in terms of like because because they've been. I've been no- I've noticed that they've been doing it more and more where they've been like distancing Peter Parker from the symbiote in recent iterations. So, you know, like um like the new Venom has nothing to do with Spider-Man. Uh right. the the one from uh the, the Tom Hardy Venom has nothing to do with Spider-Man. And um which is fine. That's that's all good. So I'm curious what they do in this in this game seeing as though they don't have it's not. It doesn't have to be. It's not as 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 loosely as closely tied to that. So, we'll see. I don't know. I'm not. You know, I don't have any expectations uh, except the gameplay is going to be fun because Insomniac is doing it. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm all for that web slinging action. I want to throw people off buildings. I want to jump off of buildings and web them against the building and all <laughs> kinds of other web slinging shenanigans. Um, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, like, I know we're talking about a lot of PS5 stuff, um, cause there was a showcase today that, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, which explains all of these things. Um, yeah. no, but you know yes. what wasn't in that showcase? <laughs> what? More PS5s. That's what wasn't in that <laughs> showcase. That's the, and that's the problem. <laughs> but I'm like, how you, like, how are you, how are you hyping up like games coming out? I can't play. <laughs> that, yeah, that I won't be able to play. Like, it, and and they may do the 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 PS4 releases too, but I'm like, bruh, 
what's the like they are showcasing the footage on ps5 so it makes people want to play it on ps5 but i can't play it on ps5 because i don't i, I can't get a hold of a ps5 i can't even touch a ps5 i can't even d test play a, d a ps5 that's What's one the hell point? of a dilemma. That's one hell of a dilemma. That is literally throwing a carrot in my face. That's one hell of like, bull crap. That's what that is. <laughs> that is a carrot. That is a massive carrot. I'm on a treadmill. I can't get it. That's some bullshit. <laughs> hey, you want to play this game, boy? Yeah, I want to play this game. Well, you want this PS5? Yeah. Well, you can't have the PS5. But we do have all these games in stock, though. Don't worry <laughs> about that. <laughs> but you know what they did? What they also showcased? What they showcased? God of War, Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And th th now this game has always looked gorgeous. Um, and I don't know why Kratos is this. This thing is never cold. Like this guy's in the in the trailer. He's just in the winter, uh, in the snow, the snow wasteland, no shirt on. <laughs> and I was like, you ain't cold at all, man. <laughs> it looks yeah. No, this yeah. game looks freaking sick. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> and also, on top of that, uh, on top of that, you know, Atreus is growing up. Yeah. Oh, you mean boy? I don't, his name yes. was boy to me. <laughs> <laughs> Atreus who? Who? You mean boy. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean... It is, <laughs> you know, we got we got we got dog sleds. You got the the lake frozen over. Yeah, it's. I, I, I don't know, man. That I was excited about this. Yeah, this looks really good. This gives me the same vibes I got from watching uh, the Rise of Zero Dawn um, mm. trailer reveal. Yeah, yeah. Um, it gives me the same vibes because if they're what they're doing, which which I love about some of their newer sequels. Is that they give us what we had and then build on it. They yeah. do the same thing, but more and better. Yeah. Like, like they showed us Atreus grown up. Cool. That's what I wanted. I thought they'd have him come back older, but that really doesn't mean anything. Because, yeah. you know, See, his I, age is not really a factor. I feel, like it, I feel like it makes sense kind of in terms of the age because, like... I mean, it's it's kind of like Ragnarok in the world. I would imagine that it would be a big. It, it wouldn't. They they they're not gonna wait like ten years, to see him grow up and be a man, um, right? Because <laughs> th that would just be stupid on their part. But yeah, so, I mean, we have, we have we have some competent villains doing some yeah, competent yeah. things. We're we're gonna we're gonna take out this dude before he gets full power. I like yeah. it. <laughs> also, the other thing is that see the 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 reason why I'm excited about this, especially. Like I'm more excited about this is because you see actual gameplay footage in this trailer. You do. So, you do. and and that was the other thing that that we know from the previous game is that there have typically, um, in, in the in the previous God of War. The the cutscenes to gameplay was seamless, uh -huh. so you know. So uh, what uh, we see some of the gameplay in this trailer, but you also know that this is going to be the expectation is that it's going to be the same type of of deal. So 100%. like the entire game was one com was a continuous take. So yeah, I'm I'm all for it. I'm excited about this. And I, and and I'm looking at some of the some of the parts of the trailer. I, I got Atreus. I, I love this hot. You got Atreus riding on this uh, blue spirit goat. That's, mm -hmm. that's hype. I'm excited for the I'm excited for the combos. I'm excited for the carnage because his combos look a lot more um, well brutal yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and intricate. Um, so I'm this. The gameplay has always, always. Um, been good for me. Um, and this this doesn't seem to really disappoint. Not at all. Yeah, graphics look consistent. Um, whole thing looks consistent. I'm excited to see what they do with the story. Um, do you know who the characters at the end of that? Um, I feel like I know him from somewhere. I don't know who it is. Um, Ooh. I'm not sure. 
I'm not uh, sure. It looked like, um, so the dude looked like a giant. Um, I didn't know that there were black people in, uh, in the Norse in, mythology, like in the Norse lands. Uh, so, um, yeah, so I have no freaking clue who that, that was, who that, that girl was. Um, I guess we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, I guess we'll have to play the game to find out before we can play the game again. Yeah. We need to get PS5s. And who else to better sponsor us than Sony themselves? Sony, and, sponsor us. Oh, the <laughs> other thing, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I got to, again, I need to see the story. But I also, like, I don't know exactly how I feel about that. Like, I'm sure that they're, you know, that some African people may have made their way north. But it's unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's not. I mean, <laughs> yeah. That's why you only see maybe one or two. Yeah, and I just hope it's. Some... I just hope it's not like one of those like you know we needed we needed to have diversity and we needed to you have. You know exactly blah, blah. what that's for. I'm like, you know, that's exactly what that's yeah, for. Yeah, it, it it could be. Who knows? But because we did see in the previous one that like it hinted to other pantheons and other like in other cultures and their gods. Uh, when they went into that vault, so yeah, like yeah, like she, it could, it could very easily because he's uh, like uh, Kratos is Greek, yeah. He's Greek so guy. like you know, so he, uh, so he made his way north. Um, so I mean, he came. He's not. He's probably not the only person who's done that. So my thing is, I just want to. I just hope that it makes sense in terms of the story as to why there is a black African. <laughs> <laughs> All in, the way in, up north, in, in Odin's north, because that don't make sense to me. No, it, well, it don't make sense, and hopefully they have an explanation. I mean, hopefully they just make a game where we just go to African mythology. I mean, Kratos is already taken out Greek. He's going to go to Norse. He maybe they mm-hmm. go to Egyptian, and he'll know he'll take out you know Isis. And, well, see, uh, the thing is, and, the thing is, he's not like. I think that's part of his development, though to this point is like he's not just like yeah i'm just here to kill all the gods and that was part of the trailer is that like he is explicitly not wanting atreus to go and like kill gods like he says that explicitly i like i'll i'll not have you like like fighting and and killing and killing gods um just because he knows like what that like he knows the toll that that has like yeah yeah, like and and especially like uh, you see, especially in the first God of War game, that Odin is just a a dick. So <laughs> yeah, how come all the how come all the leader how come all the the the, the god chi- yeah leaders, the, chi- the, the chief, chief god gods, yeah why are they all just straight up assholes? Because Zeus was unredeemable. The dude was a straight up dick, and yeah, and, and, and he was he's written that way in any in any incarnation I've seen him in. Um, he's just, he's, I mean, he, he was written this way, even in mythology, just a straight of womanizer. Everyone knows this, but Athena, um, yeah, he, he turned a, he turned a cow, <laughs> he turned a woman to a cow. So he didn't, he wouldn't get caught cheating. Like but people, but people knew he cheated anyway. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> like I, so he's an asshole. So not only is he the cheater, but he <laughs> actively hates any person that's not him. Like, yeah. like, like, like his brother, it's like, Hey, you know what you need to do? Why don't you rule the underworld for me? Nigga, sit down there and go down there before I kill you, son. Go, like, yeah, like you, like, like, yeah. So, like, Zeus is just an asshole to most yeah. people. And then you have Odin, and I'm using just God of War Odin. Like, uh, what's his face? What's stuck to the tree? Odin comes down here and tortures me every day. And the way he said every day, every broke day, me. every day. <laughs> Every day, and I was just like, "Damn!" Like Odin's got it on his calendar, just like oh, I got torture this son of a bitch today. Hang on, yeah, it's like by four o'clock. <laughs> by four o'clock, I was just like, and the dude was just ready to die. Now, I don't know about you, I have not hated anyone that much to where <laughs> on my daily schedule, I have to go torture. Them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> have yeah. them regenerated. I, I will say so. There were a lot of so besides some of the big names like God of War and Spider uh, Spider Man, there were a, a, a number of other games that they showcased as well. 
So, um, I don't know if you saw like the Project Eve. It kind of looks like a knockoff. Uh, um, damn, what's the what's the name of the uh, the two B and and uh, like the the Android game um, that came out on PS. What? Which Android game? There's like two of them. You're talking about the one with the uh, with the covered eyes? They had like covered yeah. eyes? Yeah, it's a... It's um, a... What is that called? What happens if I Google that? I what comes up. Android... Damn, son. Because um, the, the girl's name is like... The, the, the female like droid's name is like 2B. Um, Nier, Nier Automata. <laughs> yep. It looks, like a, it looks like a knockoff Nier Automata. Is that really hard to do, though? I feel like that's not really hard to do. I mean, it kind of is. Nier Automata kind of has a distinct look and feel. Yeah. Um, this looks like a it. This looks like a more macabre near uh, near Automata, but yeah, uh, Project Eve is is what it's called. Um. Yeah, I don't know. It's. I don't know. You know, you know, what I, you know what I do love though. Um, when you're watching these trailers, and at the bottom they put not actual gameplay, and yeah, um, yeah. and I'm thinking like, there's that one dipstick that didn't read it. And it's like, dude, this game, this gameplay looks amazing. <laughs> well, see, that's, that's <laughs> they did that because they for so many years they would show like demos, and then pe- it would come out, and people were like, bro, this doesn't look anything like it. And and the thing is, especially if it's an Ubisoft game, like they would show game, they would show tra- like trailers where nothing in the game looks like that trailer. Like that right. was that was that was what really got people in trouble because well, it was like, bro, the cutscenes don't even look like that. <laughs> and that's 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 when you know you really messed up. And you're like, bro, like like, like pre rendered cutscenes don't even look good. Damn, son. <laughs> Oh man, uh, <laughs> I can't stop laughing. <laughs> Can you imagine being in that room? Like, like the, the CEO didn't know. And it's like, hey man, did you really like <laughs> make gut scenes that weren't in the game and put it in the <laughs> showcase? Well, I thought they wouldn't notice, nigga. You got PS4 graphics <laughs> on this thing, and then you got PS3 gameplay graphics. What the hell, man? Like, how do you think people weren't gonna notice? Like, are, are they mad? Like, hell yeah, they mad. The fuck. <laughs> They bought a whole yeah. new system and they bought this brand new game. Yeah. They... <laughs> yeah, I'm like, bro, y'all got y'all, y'all gonna have to do better than this. <laughs> oh man, and uh, so they got they got they got a Star Wars remake of Knights of the Old Republic. Star Wars is one of those franchises where it's hard to come up with new content. No, it's not hard to come up with new content because I feel mm-hmm. like there's a lot you could do with Star Wars. Yeah, I, and there's a lot of fan fiction. There's a lot of great stories you could do. It's a galaxy far, far away. You could literally make up anything you want. Yeah, in that sandbox, and they and do. It, they do, and they make it sound like it's super freaking hard to to do so. At least with the movies, mm-hmm. um, the games like and that's the Old Republic. Um, I kind of welcome the remake because it's gonna have updated graphics and everything. Yeah, which would be yeah. fun. It makes me think like, why can't you just make a new Star Wars game? I guess, and yeah, it, it, because because the Knights of the Old, because the Old Republic is a tried and true game, and more than likely, what they're going to do is they're going to re they're going to release this remaster, um, and if it does well, they're going to build off of that engine because it 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 does it's it's two it's kind of two parts because they're work they're probably designing a new engine or they're um designing a new like system but Mm -hmm. they already have a preset story so they don't have to do a lot of the they don't have to rewrite an entire story and rewrite entire quests and stuff like that because of uh for for a new game they basically just have to redesign an old game it's kind of like what they did for the final fantasy remakes uh on steam where they kind of updated it yeah 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 yeah, uh, well, I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to it because honestly, I played it when I was younger, um, and I'd like to revisit it when I'm old, now that I'm older to see if it still kind of holds up. 
Yeah. Um, I still have to get a PS5 to play the damn thing, but, you know. <laughs> and, and, and one that's, thing at that's, a time. That's literally the entire, that's the entire showcase. Is like, man, that that's great for people who have a PS5. Right. Right. And so now I so okay, so I want to jump back to Project Eve because I have it in front of me now. All right. So uh I so ah, uh, I I don't I'm not really feeling this. I feel like I've been here before. Yeah, that's what that's what I, I'm saying. I, yeah, so I see what you're saying cuz I, I, I if, like looking at this, first off, her design I'm I, it feels so generic. Look, yeah, it's it's I, it's it's generic fan servicey, and that's why I, I was like, it's like near Automata, but like, but like Aldi brand. Yeah, dude, I've it's seen like, better three D renders on like fan made projects. Not uh, like at least with at least with d- design, like this feels super just basic, and not even like uh, like this doesn't even feel like uh, this is nothing unique about this. Or her, even like, like she's got a sword, cool, nothing new with that. Her movements, there's no actual, there's nothing unique about any of this here. Even the creature she's killing, uh, the way that they're showing this off, doesn't feel like anything unique. I feel kind of like Final Fantasy XV looking at this, like yeah. the way she's kind of moving around. Yeah, but, um, yeah. Feels hella, it feels hella anime ser- fan servicey for sure. Yeah. Um, not to knock what they do, just like yeah, just, it's, it's just it's, it's just not like compelling, and it doesn't grab you like when yeah, you watch it's it. Yeah, exactly. it's just exactly. Some of these beasts look cool, but I, it kind of loses me when I'm watching this. You know, this small, you know, hundred twenty pound chick, you know, soaking wet. Now she's you know, probably these... she's probably like three tons because she's like an android or something like that. Yeah, see, and talk about that genre. The only problem I have, because it's because it's mainly fan service, why they have it. At least for me, that's my big brain theory. Yeah. But you know, that was fun to watch younger because it was kind of a fantasy element. Um, at least yeah. for me. But yeah. now that I'm older, like it takes me out of it when I like when you have this size difference, like this, and like physics just don't really matter. Yeah. Like you have like why. Like you have her just piling through everything. Oh, she's an android. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then why the hell aren't these machines just androids too and just make them smaller? Yeah. I don't understand. Like why the, make them bigger? This is the other thing. Why would you give a why would you give a robot breasts? Oh, and a fat ass. Yeah, like, like the, what? Like what's the what's the functional purpose of that? Well, <laughs> function these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> No, but those, those, like, are, those are excellent points. Those are excellent I'm like, points. Like, like, I understand from like a and like a a, a a attracting players to your design, but I'm like, what's the practical design of giving a robot breasts? Yeah. So, so on that, you know what? So, like, I need a battle engine did really well with this because they didn't focus on like any of that. Yeah. And they had a reason for it. It's so, like we wanted to, you know, make them look human. That was it. We wanted to make them look right, human. right. Cool. So if she, if she had a little, she had small, she had small cups, but they were there, and it was never a big deal because it's like, oh yeah, let's make her look human. When I look at anything animate android, this it's like, how do we make, how do we make you know weebs cream their pants and justify <laughs> at the same time this supposed tiny ch- uh, tiny woman destroying creatures like it's nothing, like it's effortless. It's yeah. effortless. I like, mean, how it's, do you it's just, justify that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's and and it's just anime, you know. Like this, it, that's that's how they do it. Um, it 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 is what it is. But that's part. Of, that's kind of see. That's part of the reason why I'm not like I'm not an anime fan because of just kind of oh like boy. I don't know. Oh just, it's just and it's not even just like an old boy. Like I'm about to do like a visceral anime. I there are anime. There's anime that I like. There's anime that I will watch. But in general, like, uh, yeah, I just don't like it because it's just kind of like, I, I think that there is a certain style and there are certain tropes that I'm just not a fan of in anime, right? Like this, the the super cutesy, like the cutesy femme fatale and, and all that stuff. And like this tiny little boy who somehow like overtakes uh, uh, this giant man. Like that, like that can be fun, but like that's like literally everything shonen is that it's, same it's- thing. It's, it is ridiculous because 
like, like why am I training six years for this little boy to beat me in two months? Yeah. It, it's infuriating. It's infuriating. And so last bit on this project, even I'll leave it alone. Um, they have this in tags at the end of this trailer where they literally just give her armor. Yeah. Why couldn't you do that with the protagonist? Like, like, like Samus because. does this. Like, like well, yeah, because then you can't see her voluptuous figure, um, and the weaves can't have that, you know. Yeah. Because because yeah. Samus did this where she was a woman under the suit, and the suit gave her powers. It it, it it enhanced her. It made sense. Like, and if they made this game like this with that in mind, like you know, she's taking down these androids and stuff like that. You mm-hmm. know, she's got she's got a big body suit. I would be down for that because then it's it. You can have fan service moments in the game when she takes off the suit, which fine, sell that sell that point, fine. Yeah, but but you're you're killing two birds with one stone. You because they do it with Samus, fan service moments when she doesn't have the armor on. Great gameplay once she has the armor on. That makes sense. Cool, everyone's happy. Yeah. You know, but you even do it I, in a Spider-Man game where you know you got the unlockable outfit where you can swing around in your boxers. <laughs> in your boxers, yes, yeah, and <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you do. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, and for those that are in the comments, they're gonna be just like, "Well, well, uh, you know, King, you you love Horizon Zero Dawn, and she's taking out big old mechanical creatures. Yeah, how was your problem with that?" Me, 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 me. First off, it ain't fan service when I see Aloy run around. One, yeah. Two, when I see her take out a creature, it's tactical. She's not, she's not overpowering a saber tooth mechanical monster. You gotta duck and weave and shoot it from a distance. Yeah. Or cut under his belly. It's tactical. It ain't the same thing. This Project Eve lady, every android ever created anime S style, is literally bodying things four times their size and weight. Um, like it's nothing. It doesn't make sense. So yeah. yeah. So shut up your comments, please. I know that. <laughs> I know. I know you guys are typing so fast in the comments right now about yeah. that. And then. Yeah. Uh, and then. So this. So. The next game that they had, it's it's cartoon. It looks like it looks like a. It's like um, it's it's from the makers of Borderlands. Yeah, so it's yeah, like it's, so it's Gearbox. It. Um, it's like Tiny Tina's Wonderland, or it it looks like World of Warcraft had a baby with um that game you just mentioned. Yeah, Borderlands. Um, Borderlands. That's what that's what it looks like. Um, and you know, if you're a fan of Borderlands, you're probably a fan of this. I mean. It's, yeah, I mean it's it, the same thing. It, it's it, it'll it'll be interesting. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I know yeah, that really, I know that I say it, it'll be interesting with like everything that ever happens, but um, I don't know. I mean it, it'll it'll be something, I guess. Uh, yeah, 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 You got a you got a can that is a that's the beginning of a waterfall. You got you know mushrooms with teeth. Mm-hmm. You know it's it's it, it feels like someone was. Smoked some weed and did some acid when they wrote this while playing D and D. Yeah, and they yeah. said, "Hey, you know, what, you know, what would be cool for character creation. What if I did this?" And someone's like, "Dude, that's cool." And the uh, the dungeon master was like, "Hey, this river's made out of soda pop," and uh, <laughs> they just ran with it and said, "Yeah, that's fun." It's and, that key. Uh, it's that key and pill skit where uh, where like the the dude, the GM's cousin, like comes and plays, and he's like, he's like. To roll twenty, roll a d a d twenty. The it's like the eye of the the eye of call that comes. Eleven titties fall out. Like that's <laughs> that's what that feels like. That's what, <laughs> it's like someone who doesn't regularly play D anD D was just like, what? <laughs> yeah, like what if we did this? Hey, what, he was what like, if we did this? He's like he's he, he's like I want to pull up in my Hummer. Like, well, you can't do that if you pull up in your Hummer, uh, and it's like something <laughs> stupid. And the dude is like, "Roll a d20." He's like, "It's a 20." <laughs> no, that's that's what I feel like. Yeah, that's, that's what it feels like. It, this looks like a fun one. Um, uh, next... I I think so. I it was. I, I, I'm not gonna go through all of these. I think I'm just gonna yeah, like highlight some of the some of the ones that I that I liked from what I saw. So. Um, they, there's a Vampire the Masquerade uh, game coming out um, that looks pretty interesting. I think so. Vampire, if people don't know, the World of Darkness is a 
is a tabletop gaming system similar to like D&D or, you know, the like. Um, Vampires, the Masquerade is is probably like the biggest thing from it. And they're making a game um, where you can, uh, you know, you can create your character and you'll be playing through. And this is called Blood Hunt. Um, looks interesting. Um, I'm uh, I'm curious to see like actual gameplay footage and and what the game will look like once we're able to play it. And the story might be interesting as well. I I've been curious about that w- game world for a while, so we'll see what happens there. Yeah, as far as uh, final thoughts on this presentation, um, I didn't get through all of the trailers. So I got through the main ones that I uh, found the most interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, honestly, I do... Everything that I've seen here looks exciting in some way, shape, or form. They got something for everybody. Yeah. Um, So good on you, Sony, for making me really want to buy a PS5 and also not... Screw you for not making enough for everyone to have <laughs> Like, because some of these games look like a lot of fun. Like, honestly, like, like, um, they, they got a line of good titles lined up. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and let gorgeous. it be clear that, like, even if I'm not excited for something, I'm not saying that, like, that's no judgment against anyone, anyone who is. I'm just, oh, I'm, it's just, I'm judging. I'm judging. 100. <laughs> if we if we don't want the same thing, well, we like, know you're you judging. No part. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I want to remind everyone. I judge the hell out of everyone that <laughs> is listening to this and is has a different opinion than I do. So you know, I'm not forgiving that way. But that's what I that's that's what a king does. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think that um overall, like this showcase was actually pretty good for the stuff that came out. Mm-hmm. Um. And honestly, like I'm really excited to see what they do. I've really been excited about a couple. I've really not been excited about new console games in a while. Um, I think the last one I was really excited for. I mean, besides Horizon, um, mm-hmm. Forbidden West. I think the last time I was excited was Kingdom Hearts Three. Um, as far as like to buy a new system to play this game, you know, like here's one of the titles you yeah. look forward to. I mean, that's so, that's kind of disappointing that that was the game that you were excited to buy a. A place oh, for for you, you have no idea you have no idea how disappointing <laughs> that was oh my gosh that's well, like i think i have an idea since i bought that <laughs> game day one and played it day one and was disappointed day one so you know we, we, that's the, that's the conversation for another time to rehash <laughs> and and and, don't, and all that i was listening i'm not going back to play the damn thing no it's not worth another playthrough um not even on critical mode like no, not worth it. So don't give me that. Play it again on critical mode. Wasn't meant to be played. The game wasn't <laughs> meant to be played at all. The game wasn't finished. Need to be re- story need to be redone. Um, and nope, you got to me on a tangent because I almost went into the, <laughs> the DLC they put on there that should have been in the original game to freaking begin with, where they had you know the Kyrie journey on there where you could team up with Kyrie and make her playable after <laughs> six, seven games. Or yeah. actually, just the last three games, not having her available. Ah, no. <laughs> ah. Anyway, anyway, anyway. <laughs> so let's talk about something else. Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about something else that's sweet. Let's talk about our sweet girl, <laughs> Jason. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, All right. Time out. Time cool, out. Cool, time cool, out. Cool. Uh, <laughs> um, so one quick note: if you can, like, if if you feel like you have to burp, like, try and like do it away from the mic. Yeah. Um, cause especially cause like if it's like in the middle of saying something, it's harder to edit out that way. I will do that. In fact, what I'll do from here on out is I will just mute myself because the other headset had a mute button on it. Oh. I just muted myself whenever I did that. This one does not. So I just have to click him on audacity to do so. And that's what I'll do from now on. I'll just meet myself whenever I have to burp or drink some water. Um, until I get my other mic fixed. So, but it up. If I do that. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah, I'll make sure I do that. Or I'll just at least cover it and move it away. All right. So cool. we don't have that. We do not have that. All right. Yeah. I, 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 the, that show, I, the showcase came out today. I didn't get through all of them. But, you mm-hmm. know, that 
Fuck Project Eve, though. I'm not feeling that game at all. <laughs> dog, it's like, dog, like, looking, like, the first shot is her of her ass. It's just like, yeah, are you yeah. serious? It's like, really? It's like, that's, that's you guys. We and, know who's, who that shot was for. <laughs> dog, and, like, it's, it's, it's a 3D render. Like, it doesn't even look natural. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. Like, who, like, who, what weeb is sitting here just like, oh, man. Oh, man. I'm like, dude, that's so generic. I, I guess it's, I'm just I'm just curious as to like who's like sitting there watching this and is like, man, this game is gonna be great. Cause it's certainly not me. No. No. Some people are looking at the I mean we know who we know who they are. They're four between fourteen and sixteen emo. Um they got the hair, they probably dyed it, they got a little red streak. <laughs> um, they probably have a twi- they probably have a, a, a very di- they have a dead twitch stream um, <laughs> and they probably listen to something along the lines of pop evil or something emo ish like that so we know who they are and it's a phase they'll, get, they'll come out of it um, they probably got a poster of her no in that's their not room that's not those are, that's not those aren't the people it's it's typically the dude who's like who <laughs> it's like yeah dude so so fucking hot. <laughs> Bruh, it's just, uh, yeah, I don't know when I don't know why women don't talk to me. <laughs> oh, I'm man. the perfect gentleman. Anyway, um, <laughs> don't even start. Don't even start that mess. Don't even um, start that mess. So let's just let's just talk about Sweet Girl since right. uh, yeah since we're going on eight fifty. Um, yeah, let's just All talk right, about do, Sweet Girl. Do you want to do an intro and talk about Sweet Girl? And we yeah. kind of you know, edit, you know, edit around that, or do you want just to kind of dive into? I'll do an intro. I'll do an intro. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do an intro, and then we'll uh, we'll do one, or you're gonna do one. I, I wasn't clear. I'm sorry. We will do an intro. Perfect. We'll do an intro. We'll, we'll do our so typical. Sweet... We'll do our typical intro on this one. Yeah. And then we'll go into Sweet Girl, and then uh, how long do you want to talk about Sweet Girl? Uh, right. I don't know, like like th- 30, 45 minutes. All right. Cool. Let's talk about that sweet girl, Jason Mamawa. Mm. <laughs> All right, I'm at 47 minutes. I am too. Perfect. Let's get started. Are you at and... Are you at 47:21 right now? Um, I well, 26 now. 26. Now. Okay, good, good. I just wanted to make sure that it, we were closer than 16 seconds apart. Yeah, that would be kind of rough. Okay. I wouldn't be life. terrible at it, but it, I like I would just have to make a note of that. But we're good. Yeah. So I'm, right. I'm ready on the countdown when you are. All right. And five, four, three, two. What is the word? It is Lord Third. You're number one trash player, aka the garbage goat, aka Jackie's Bay, aka the lost boss. And I wish, I really wish that I was Jason Momoa. Running around, <laughs> kicking pharmaceutical CEOs in the throat. But unfortunately, I am not. But you know someone who is, though. My friend. He's talking about the king of dreams, looking so clean and mean with his ten rings, with a long hair and beard, and trying not to sound so weird. Talking about my sweet <laughs> piece, my sweet girl, sitting back beating all these CEOs for her, to save her pearls. Yeah, we'll make it work, because we are... <laughs> the Sly Guys, delivering the hottest of our takes on all things nerdy and culture. And yes, indeed, it is uh, very obvious, it should be, that we are talking about the new Jason Momoa-led movie, Sweet Girl. That... Yes, yeah, so and these intros are getting harder and harder, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Like, we try to make these entertaining, and <laughs> we do it for you guys. Just know that not all of them are winners, and we just work with what we have, Okay. With, with love, <laughs> with love, and uh, speaking of love, there's definitely more powerful than the love of a father um, and his daughter um, and wife who died of cancer. Um, <laughs> that's that's. <laughs> uh, yes, we're talking about Sweet Girl, uh, the Jason Momoa movie um, that is on Netflix. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So, in uh, with Sweet Girl. It is uh, the movie that, um, like Jason, let, let's be real. Jason Momoa is the major reason why anyone watched this movie. 
they He's saw the Jason. Only Moore. reason, yeah. It, like, because granted, Isabella Merced is the it plays his daughter, and she does it well. She does it fairly Ooh. well. Uh, but I'm like, I have no idea who that is. We watched this movie because of Jason Momoa, and basically, after losing the love of his life to a pharmaceutical company's greed, and with his daughter without a mother, he's without justice for now. Basically, it's a it's a typical revenge movie. Um, as always, spoilers. Because we're going to be talking a little bit, just kind of like in depth of like the story, the 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 action, the choreography, the plot, um, and the plot is Jason Momoa. That is the, the, the that is the plot. Um, so that's what uh, that's what people watch for. Um, yeah. So King, what were you, you you watched this movie before I did? I believe. Yes, I, I yes I did, and lo, and low key I thought Nathan Ford was going to come out. Um, and <laughs> yeah. pose a con to take down his pharmaceutical company because this was after watching so many episodes of Leverage recently. This was the perfect <laughs> premise for an episode of <laughs> Leverage, and um, I thought that was a missed opportunity um, for someone <laughs> to do that. And um, and yeah, so I thought this before would came out of somewhere. Overall, so this this is the hard part about what we do, guys. Um, when you watch a lot of movies like we do, and we try to talk about them and break them down, you seek a, f- you, you tend to pick up on a, f- a few setups, uh, for twists that are supposed to come later. You know, the movie overall was, you know, enjoyable. That's initial, initial thoughts there. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. but, um, I honestly felt as if they hired Jason Momoa before they got the script, um, and they made some changes. Because <laughs> I feel like they hired him on, they paid all their money, they blew their load. They're just like, yeah, we got Jason Momoa. It's like, all right, so husband dies in the first five minutes. What the hell? You didn't tell me this happened. When, well, we, you know, the daughter takes over and she, you know, does everything. But we already have Jason Momoa. We can't just have him die in the first five minutes. <laughs> we got to make some changes. We got to make some changes. What are we going to do? Well, let's have Jason Momoa play his daughter and we'll throw a twist at the end that it was always him or always her being him. All right, you're the boss. Like, that's <laughs> what I feel like would happen. Because, like, when you watch this movie, um, you have Jason Momoa who um, did a phenomenal job playing this. I want to say that. Um, he did a phenomenal job. He was very charismatic, very believable. Um, I wouldn't say he acted like a little girl. That's for sure. But um, he was very compelling. Very, very compelling throughout the entire movie. And the movie has some, you know, some obvious tells about the twist that comes up at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, because there are a couple scenes where you think, you know, professional mixed martial arts fighter, Jason Momoa, big ass dude having trouble with some, I don't know, smaller guys. <laughs> which, 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 okay. Uh... So, so we're going to put out here. So King already alluded. He already mentioned and uh, alluded to it. But the big twist here is that in the beginning of the movie. Um, so Jason Momoa. And Isabella, who play who is his daughter, um, they lose their wife and mother, respectively, to cancer. Um, and they lose her because the company that produces the this name brand drug basically strong arms a smaller producer that's going to make a generic version into not releasing it so that it remains unaffordable um to uh to consumers so jason momoa in a a, a segment of the show where they're calling in live on cnn which I don't watch like TV news anymore, but I'm pretty sure they don't do live call-ins anymore on no, national for, on national news. For this reason, by the way. Yeah, for, for this, this reason. reason. Because what he does is he's like, my wa- my wife is dying because you strong armed this company. If she dies, it's on you. And then the guy, the CEO, is like, we all know that cancer is a death sentence. In his old like kiss-ass PR voice. He's like, 
we know that cancer is typically a death sentence for most people. It's just a matter of how and when and how much does it, what is, what price can you put on more time with the person you love? With the most skeevy, uh, like, asshole-ish, like, voice. It felt dirty. Yeah. Like, you like, really felt like, dirty. Yeah, like, th- this dude is, and the dude who, who, the CEO is played by Riley from National Treasure, by the way. So, like, <laughs> it, <laughs> so, so, yeah, so, and Jason Momoa's response is, like, if my wife dies, it's going to be your death sentence. And right. on, on national <laughs> well, television, television, on oh. national television, he's like, he threatens this dude's <laughs> life on a life call. Like, I'm pretty sure that whoever was in charge of that switchboard should have cut off that call the moment that he started talking about my wife is dying because of you. Dog, and you know what's even worse? Police never showed up. Yeah. Like, and, they got his name and phone number. You can't threaten someone on national television and then not have the police show up at your door. Yeah. Like, you, like, it, like there's no, like, there's no follow-up to any of this. Um... Nobody, like, nobody responds. Like, he just, like, you know, his daughter eventually, like, comes in. He hangs up the phone. And then, like, it cuts to, like, I don't know, like, a day or so later or a week or so later. And his their wife and his wife dies. And, you know, he's torn up about it. So, and then, so a, a couple and, of months later, after she dies, um, the, the, the rich kid son... Of Stevens and Leto from Blackish um, calls up Jason Momoa and is like, "Hey, I've got dirt on this company that you don't want. Make sure you're not followed. Come meet me at this train station." Blah blah blah. And like the nerd that he is, apparently he's he works for Vice. And lo and behold, of course, Jason Momoa doesn't tell his daughter what's going on, and so she tails him. Um, this man is tailed by his daughter to a train station. Um, where he meets up with this guy, and this assa- this like corporate assassin comes and stabs this dude to death on a train, public train, public, public, public train, People and they are- live in like Philly, I think they live in like they live in like Philadelphia. And uh, this like- train was empty, by the way, which is a- what annoyed me about this scene. They somehow got an empty train on Philly. Yeah, at, at, like during like during yeah in the middle of the day, like right. Get the heck out of here, bro. I don't like, know you know what's going on. Yeah, like this. This dude just like this dude just walks up like I know it's not New York, but there's gonna be people on that train. But dude just comes, stabs uh, Stevens and Leto's son uh, to death, and he he dies. But Jason Momoa, of course, fights him, and then he finds out that his daughter is there, and she tries to like she like jumps up on the dude's neck, and he like throws her out of the train um, when it stops. Um, Thank goodness, because that would have ended the movie right yeah. there. <laughs> and uh, and then like while Jason Momoa is like fighting, dude, like he like he like he knocks him out for a sec, and then he goes to like tend to his daughter who got thrown out of the train. But then he gets stabbed by the guy, and then uh, he like um, and the the guy like throws him through the window. Um, and you see him just kind of like lying there, looking at his daughter, and he like gives her a thumb up, thumbs up of like It'll, everything's gonna be okay, everything's gonna be all right. And then uh, you see them fade out, and then it's like six months later, um, or no, it was like it was like two years later, right? Yeah, it was, yeah, years it was like later. it was like two years later. So two years later, two years later. Um, you see Jason Momoa, like, you know, in the gym, and then his daughter's at home watching the, the, the movie reel, and it, essentially... No, no, that's backwards, it's backwards. She's training in the gym this time. Oh, yeah, she's training in the gym, and then you see her at home watching the... Then it cuts to her at home. She's basically doing the training that her dad was doing and coaching her through at the beginning, and then you see Jason Momoa come home. So, you know... The unsuspecting viewer is like, oh yeah, Jason Momoa survived. The twist is that he didn't survive, and everything that is that happens in the movie from then on is her basically living vicariously through her. Like she, it's like her living how she believes that her dad would have done, doing right. what he taught her. Um, right. 
which exactly. includes murdering the CEO um, at a fundraiser for children he doesn't know which country they're from. Um, <laughs> Maybe this guy a real douchebag. Like, like killing train. Yeah, because like he's at this he's at this fundraiser. Like everything that you could do. Like all of your worst thoughts on who are the CEOs of a pharmaceutical company. Are, you got are, are real in yeah in this man like in Riley from <laughs> National Treasure. So, dude comes in. He's like he was like yes, like the your your donations tonight are going to help the children in Africa. I mean India, India. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> and he like he like chuckles about it, and then everyone's like, well, that was kind of fucked up but i didn't know what country they're from either because africa is an entire country right so you know there's that um <laughs> Dog. so like, they, they, every trope that makes this guy just unredeemable yeah the, they just the absolute in there. worst person so um but yeah so you so what happens in the beginning of the movie is you see that like jason momoa finds out that this guy is going to be at this fundraiser and Jason Momoa goes and confronts him and kills him, like knifes him to death. But the thing that's weird is that in this fight scene, you see Jason Momoa. Now, I know if you're listening to this, you should know who Jason Momoa is. You've probably seen Jason Momoa. You've seen Aquaman. You know what he looks like. Man is 6'4", built, beard, long hair, like this dude, this dude, this dude loses masculinity. Like yeah, this the is this is savage like masculinity. Yeah, this is like the this is like one of the manliest like men, like you know, in in presentation and just and just like look. And this dude is this dude six four built is struggling with this with Riley from National Treasure. <laughs> Riley from National Treasure is like giving this dude the business for a second. You're like, bruh, he should not be struggling. Like, you, there's a moment where he like he he um, gets past his like trained security, and you're like, okay, I can see how he would have a problem with him. But then Riley from National Treasure, and eventually he he overpowers him, like he overtakes him and he kills him. Um, but. Uh, and then at this point, he goes back home, and he tells uh, his daughter that, "Hey, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get on the run. You know, we gotta leave." And she's like, "Like, what happened? Like, my dad's not a bad person." Blah blah blah. But you find out that she was really the one who 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 did this. Her dad died two years ago, along with her mom, and she's been out here by herself the entire time. And so she was basically kind of like dissociating anytime she had to like kill somebody and then make it so that and she she in her mind she was her dad so it was like so that's like the big twist of the movie and i I mean i think i think it's interesting so grant so i didn't like just see it coming and i had a lot of questions i didn't see it coming like i typically do because i was kind of i was kind of out of it for most of the movie um, I wasn't on my Winston Domus, uh, it's uh, unfortunately, <laughs> um, not this time. So I didn't, I didn't completely see it. I did fall asleep for like 15 minutes of the movie, but, um, <laughs> at least you're honest about it, but uh, at I, least you're honest I, about that. so I didn't, I didn't see it. I didn't see it like clearly coming. I did call that the, the Senator lady from the moment, like there's a senator who's supposed to be the one that's trying to keep these companies accountable that is debating the C- the the CEO on CNN at the very beginning of the movie. I was like, yeah, she's she's evil. She's a part of this. I know that she's going to be partially responsible. I call that the moment that I saw her on on uh on screen. That was well, even is it, Well, even with, with all these things, they make they make certain characters unredeemable. Like they want to make sure you know there's no gray area here. Well, it was see for her. They made her try to. They tried to make her seem like she was like, you know, like one of these like stick it to the corporation type of people. They tried really hard to make her be like the yeah, like she's she's fighting for these people when she was clearly taking bribes herself. So, hundred percent. Like, if, and I thought it was like, oh, you're taking a bribe. 
I, I didn't I didn't see any good in her. That's that was. But yeah, like again, it's easy to see. But but, but then I'm I, I'm cynical. That's cynical. So yeah, that's, I think that's everyone, see that's true. I, that's true. So so that's, that, that's that what'll be do a, it. <laughs> yeah, that that'll do it. I mean, like so when you so the movie when you're talking about uh, in regards to the twists and how it's built the characters when you when it goes back and goes back through uh, their interaction between Jason and the assassins um, and the cop, um, I especially the one with the assassin. What's his name? Um, his name is. What is that's his name? The, like like the, the Salvadorian dude, or yeah, at the end that killed Jason Momoa. Momoa. What's his name? Anyway, assassin dude. We're calling assassin. Yeah, dude. assassin dude. We're, we're um, him, yes, assassin dude. So like the conversation between him and we, at this point we believe it's Jason Momoa, but it's really Isabella. When you look back at the interaction, I thought they did pretty well because his shock makes sense when you know that he saw the daughter, not him. Um, and so they have a couple scenes like that to where when they do the reveal, they did a good job of tying some of those things together. Yeah. Um, because there are some things where you're kind of confused on why Jason would do something um, or act a certain way mm -hmm. um, and how people are reacting to Jason. And that's one of the things that I thought they did pretty well. Um, that scene I thought was done pretty well because like, he didn't act as if he was he was surprised that he saw him again, and we know why because he killed the man before. So you yeah. know, <laughs> you know, every day you see the man you killed two years later come back and sit down with you at a bar <laughs> or at a <laughs> diner, like you know, was good because like you know, um, and you know, overall, there are some fun things about this movie. You know, some yeah. of this stuff was shot pretty well. I mean, let's talk about the choreography for a minute. Let's talk about the choreography. What were some of your favorite takeaways from the choreography? That like some of your favorite fights. So I think one of my favorite fights is the one that happens immediately following him killing the CEO. Um, so there is a scene where they, so they, um, I'm gonna say they for the sake of like, you know, when I'm referring to the scenes with Jason Momoa and uh, Isabella. Merced, because um, even though it's we we know by the end of it that it's the same person, but when they go to a motel, like following, like it's their first stop after they kill the CEO, and like it's starting to make the news, um, and like it's clear that like the that sweet girl is not like she's not okay with any of this. Um, so that fight scene when the, when there's like two hitmen basically that show up to try and kill them and try and silence them and bruh that uh <laughs> when so uh they see it coming and they're like okay we gotta get up we gotta go now and it's basically like surprises dude um wrestle the gun away the way that uh she flipped over that uh the balcony and snapped dude's neck <laughs> was like <laughs> damn bro like, and i think she like snapped his neck with like his like uh his like gun strap or something like that it was something wild um because like <laughs> yeah to go out. <laughs> yeah i'm like damn bro like <laughs> like bro you don't pay you, you can't pay me enough for that like <laughs> <laughs> yeah they Man, they messed him up. But yeah, I think that was like the, honestly that was like one of my favorite scenes. Um, like the the scene versus uh, the assassin at the end. It, it's not bad, but it's like I don't know. I wasn't imp I wasn't impressed. Um, I think the, the the I think in general the uh, the other like some of the other fights were were they were they were decently done um, and. They were shot okay, um, but it wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't wowed by most of those scenes. Yeah, I think yeah. that was a thing for me. Okay, I feel you. I feel you. And, and so I'm, I'm gonna talk about that final fight scene with her and the assassin. So I hated that they. This was how they ended this. Yeah. Uh, because um, first off, this dude is stronger, better trained. Like, they didn't give him any sort of handicap for me to believe that she could take him. 
Now, at first, <laughs> he is beating the brakes off of her. Um, For sure. And, like, it's, and so he clearly wins and, and drowns her in this pool. Now, I don't know what kind of say in biology she has, <laughs> but after she clearly drowned, she yeah. clearly drowned, yeah. and the movie made a point to say, like, this is over, she somehow comes back to life, and this is what kills me. She opens her eyes and screams in the water. Now, she doesn't have any oxygen because she's already drowned in the water. So I don't know where those where that oxygen came from that she's screaming out all of a sudden. And then she instantly turns the tables and then just stabs the crap out of this guy. Now, mind you, it was satisfying that she killed him because she killed her dad. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. However, that is bullshit. He clearly... he She was choking her in the water. Yeah. <laughs> like, like she died. I would have, I I would have rather the cop lady shot him or something, and then she took the opportunity to stab the, the crap out of him yeah. after that. Like, or just don't have her get choked in the water. Like, why did you write it to do that? Because like, it, it, I mean, pull pull up the thing. People that are listening to this, pull up the fight. You'll see it. She's under there for a minute. Like, it's not like it's a quick like. You know, he slaps her a couple times. And then she regains consciousness. He chokes the life out of her in yeah, water. Underwater. 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 And so keep in mind, gasping. this is a, this is like a trained, like this dude is a, is a trained assassin. He's like the last resort killer. Right. And, 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 and she, she just learned like mixed martial arts for like two years. Only two and, years. And, and she still, and she still, she still, I think she may be like, I don't know, like 16. She's 18. Is she though? Like, I thought she was. Like, is she I though? Because I think she was like eleven when her mom died. She was like eleven or twelve when her mom died. So she's not. I don't she's even. Not, so she's not. So she's not eighteen. Oh, huh, okay. I don't know. So, I, I I could. I I could have like missed it, but I know that there is a uh the actress that plays like there's an actress that plays her at eleven years old. That's what I know. And oh, okay. so she, I'm trying to like, I'm trying to factor in like the, um, I'm trying to factor in that there's probably like some time between when Isabella becomes like the, the de facto, uh, Rachel, cause Rachel is the, is the, the sweet girl's name. Um, right. but like, it, so I assume that at most it was like four years. Because it didn't seem like it was a long time that, like, her her mom was, like, going through, like, cancer. Because we do see her have, like, a birthday and stuff mm-hmm. like that in there. But I think that there's, like, I think there's maybe, like, three or at most four years. But my impression is that this is, like, a at most, like, 16-year-old girl. Okay. Okay, so about 16. And she somehow goes from... Go, she takes out this top assassin dude with no handicap and, you know, can somehow breathe under the water. Yeah, it, it, it was just one of the stuff I've seen that just took me out the movie because now that the fog is off that we know that she's actually her, not Jason Mamawa. Um, Why do you keep saying it, it like that? I, I, you know, <laughs> you I, I, did, I, did, I did as a Maybe, I, <laughs> I know, like, no, this is, I know it's a joke, but I'm like, <laughs> like, why do you keep saying it like this you, you is my one? Uh, I did it as a joke, and now I, that's what I call him now. It's just my one. I was, I was wondering how long it was going to take for you to call me out on it. Yeah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> how oh my gosh. Do with saying it? So, I mean, like, so that, that fight scene was okay. I, no, it wasn't okay. That final fight scene was not okay for me. Um, there's no way she sh- she shouldn't have been she should have been dead. If they didn't want her to be in a compromising position, you don't have to write it that way. You did not have to write it that way. You could have had an arm bar. You could have had her use a knife in her hand to slit his wrist mm-hmm. and get an advantage. There were so many things you could have done. Having her drown underwater and then 15 seconds later regain consciousness underwater. No, 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 no. Sorry, <laughs> doesn't work for me. Bam. Um, I do like, uh, as far as fight scenes, I do like the MMA train, uh, the MMA 
uh, training segments in the beginning of the movie with Jason mm-hmm. yeah, and yeah. her daughter um, in the beginning of the movie. And then when it cuts to two years later, when she's in the gym doing a sparring session, I thought that was a very well choreographed um, uh, training sequence. There are very few cuts in that. And um, I thought it was a very good representation of what training at a mixed martial arts gym could be when, um, uh, yeah, when you're, when you're kind of just, when you're kind of just learning. Yeah. Um, I thought that was one of my favorite scenes because it shows, it showed how she's dealing with this whole thing, Mm -hmm. um, with her father dying, her mother dying. Um, you see that she does have some support as well. So it's more believable when you find out later that she's been on her own. Yeah. Um, that she has had people looking out for her, but, um, just the choreography with it. It was a light sparring session, a lot of good technique, um, realistic training, mm-hmm. you know, um, as well. So that you don't see him, you don't see her beating the crap out of him, and you don't see him beating the crap out of her because he easily could if he wanted to. Yeah. Training session. So I thought that was done really well to really showcase her ability um, in a very safe setting that was already set up, versus having her um, beat up some rando dude in the street yeah. because. That would have been pretty jarring for me. This I thought was very organic, and I really liked how they really made it authentic as far as the techniques that she used. Mm-hmm. Someone smaller um, would use these techniques for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was phenomenal. I wish they kept up to the entire movie, but that might have given away the reveal um, at the end, mm-hmm. um, for sure. But uh, yeah, I thought that. I think that's my favorite. Uh, scene to showcase uh, um, some character development, especially at the end where she's choking out Homeboy and she doesn't stop. Mm-hmm. Um, she lo- so you see her lose control, which you kind of see throughout the movie. Yeah. Well, this was a good showcase of it because they clearly are sparring. Um, so if fe- so, you really get a sense of how angry she is and how she loses control in a controlled setting. Yeah. Again, if she had done this to a rando dude, I would have been perfectly fine with her losing control because. You know, it's dangerous. Adrenaline. Yeah. In a training session where it's controlled like this, it really better showcases her mental state. And I really give props to the movie for that. Mm-hmm. Very subtle. Really love that. Um, uh, that part of it. Because um, part, part of it is like, he's tapping. He's tapping. Yeah, and, yeah. And her face, is, her face is like... <laughs> I, think that was, I think that was especially good because you saw... I, like, that's one thing that I can say about the the... The combat, um, like because of the scene at the very beginning in the gym where you see her like best old boy who probably I, I, I don't I wouldn't say that he had a lot of like size on her, um, but he had some size on her. Um, and, but you can see in that fight that she knows her stuff and that mm-hmm. she can get the better of somebody. And especially when she's fighting to kill. Right. And so, 100%. so I, I think that's the reason I will say that's one thing that I like is that it is believable. Like it's believable when you go back and you think about all the fight scenes of like, okay, she, it would make sense that someone her size would have struggled, but it also makes sense that she would be good enough to overtake these dudes. And that's what I, that's what I like kind of like once the twist is revealed of like going back because there are some movies there are some movies where that would have happened where you're like yeah no i'm not buying it but because we saw like the training that she went through with her dad and then we also see her like two years later and she has that like killer instinct when she's fighting like because we see that it's believable you know so like so i i i appreciated that yeah, kudos on the movie for doing that. Like honestly, kudos on the movie for doing that. And and they didn't have to either. Yeah, um, that's very we've true. Seen, we've seen movies where they kind of skip over that um, that portion of it, and it kind of takes it to the movie. We see the smaller character um, who we have no context of what their abilities are. Mm-hmm. Um, take out someone um, much bigger than they are, and people use that like, oh, that's how you determine it. Yeah, but it can be pretty jarring without any setup. Yeah, um, because of factors and. And you've practiced karate. I've done mixed martial arts. We both know that, you know, in real combat situations, their uh, size is a factor in mm-hmm. that. Um, and it's not, yeah. it's not everything for you fighters in the comments. It's like, oh, size isn't everything. I know you anime weebs have watched too much Bleach, um, mm-hmm. too much Hunter x Hunter. 
Um, yeah. You know, fights don't work that way. You know. Yeah. You don't. And, and, a, uh, yeah. 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 Like we we understand that you know like if you want to carry a Buster sword that is like two times like not your <laughs> weight but two times the size of an elephant but you know like yeah sure but um in in a real in a real fight that is not regulated first and foremost because that's the thing because like regulated fighting versus real fighting is different um mm -hmm. and in real fighting when you are fighting to survive when you are fighting to the death um that is different than a regulated fight where you know and, which is why in a regulated fight there are weight classes and things like that um <laughs> because in a regulated fight there are certain techniques that someone who is smaller that they might be able to use to their advantage you can't use those in a regulated fight right like there are you know that's isn't that's necessarily not the same thing but the major thing is that like typically if you are a larger a larger fighter is typically going to win in a like a real fight like a stronger larger fighter has a significant advantage mm -hmm. in a real fight and the, the same is true in a regulated fight but like but the major thing is just like it there there is a difference right um there's a reason why the, the fights are regulated by weight classes there's a reason why people have to be weighed in because you you want things on a on a uh, on a even playing field on an even playing field but in in real life i mean if you're if you're larger you typically tend to the larger person the bigger person tends to win that's the reason why people get so amazed and shocked when a smaller person beats the crap out of someone who's larger than them right 100 percent. but again if you have better technique in a real fight um, if you have better technique in a regulated fight, you typically tend to you you tend to fare better. But even technique can be beaten by just like you know size and luck sometimes. So like that's I mean that's that's the real of how it is. But I think th what King was saying, especially how they choreographed a lot of the fight scenes, was you saw even when it was like Jason Momoa. That's the reason why there's like a level of dissonance when we're watching it and there's like, yeah, it just seems weird that he would make a move like that or he would like flip over when, you know, that's not really like his, that that doesn't feel like it fits his style because then when you know the, the, the twist, it's like, oh, that makes sense. Why she yeah, like, was, why she like Black Widow spun around the dude's head and like snapped, snapped his, his neck head. on the, yeah. <laughs> because like, Jason Momoa could have choked that dude out. Like, <laughs> like, like Jason Moore could have just choked that dude out. <laughs> like it was nothing too. Like it was nothing too. Um, even um, the fight scene where she, she confronts the CEO and taking out those two guards. Yeah, she uses a fire extinguisher. Yeah, on um, the first dude. Yeah, on the first dude to blind him, and then she uses it to incapacitate him, and does it with the second. Uh, no, there's just one dude. Um, no, there's two dudes because because yeah, the other dude. dude gets shot in the head by right. because she redirect because the CEO gets a hold of the gun. And she basically, like, while he's trying to fire it at her, she points it at the other guy and kills him. Right. So when he, so when, so when she picked, used the fire extinguisher, or when knowing the reveal again, everybody knowing the reveal, her using the fire extinguisher is something very tactical and something that you have to take in consideration when you're fighting much larger opponents. She uses her environment to her advantage. Mm -hmm. She blinded the guy first and then used the weapon to incapacitate him. That's exactly what she would do. Uh, watching it the first time, you know, it wouldn't make sense. I mean, Jason can do this. Jason Wallace's character could have done this. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But seeing how um, when you incorporate what we've seen of her ability at the beginning, her ability to use the environment and her size to her advantage um, and her using the fire extinguisher, something very subtle, something that a smaller person would have to do to fight grown men. Yeah. The movie does a really good job of changing the tactics so that it fits... Um, the actual fighter itself um which makes that twist it makes it a fun twist if you didn't see it coming um and the movie definitely took some care in that and i'm happy they did and it all stemmed from that first scene um of her training in the gym yeah um which was great um which was great um but also being said you know some of these guys can lift up momo like it's nothing <laughs> and that was a dead giveaway i was like this man is 
<laughs> this man is like 250. Like, yeah. it, like, like that same scene with the bodyguard. The bodyguard lifts up Jason. And I'm just like, you are tiny as... No, he's, the bodyguard's not tiny by any means. Yeah. But you ain't lifting up no grown bruh, ass and you're not high. And, bruh, and that's not... That's the other thing. That's not the instinct that you have when you're fighting someone of that size. You're... Like... Anyone who knows anything, like even if you don't know how to fight, your instinct when you're fighting someone that big is not to try and lift them up. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, so I was like, yeah, that that seemed like a really weird decision. <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought I'm like that's some weird choreography, but all right, let's roll with it. But when you know the you know the context, yeah, but like, once you little girl, he, yeah, he's yeah, little girl, it's like, like, oh, that, oh, makes, that makes perfect sense, sense. yeah. No, there's no way they lifted Jason Moore like that. Yeah, I was like, come on, my dude. Jason Moore is, is, is Jason Moore is at least two fifty. Dog, if you're a bodyguard that can, you know, do a double leg takedown, lift some lift some dude <laughs> that size, you need to be prof- you're not getting paid enough. You need to be Bruh, professional fighter. Because I was like, Dog. bro, they lift Jason Moore up like you like like you lift up your uh, like you like like the the like you lift up like your love like your loved one in like a passionate embrace. <laughs> they, they lifted up Jason Momoa like uh like like dudes be lifting up girls in uh CW sex scenes. <laughs> that's how uh that's how they lifted up Jason Momoa. It was I was like, bro, that don't make sense. Like there's no way that you just easily cuz it was a, it was a fluid motion too. Like it was dude, it was it, like if 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 you, if you don't know if you if you had no experience fighting, you would have missed it. Like any person that's any person that's been taken down or watch enough takedowns, or has lifted anything heavy, knows that is impressive. Like, that's <laughs> I was like, "Damn, bro! Like, like you, you, like you wasting your, uh, you, you, like, you wasting those wrestling skills." Because I'm right, like, man. "Goodness gracious!" Like you can, like I'm like, you can lift this man up. Like it was, like you said, fluid. It was, whoop. oh, I was like, "Damn!" <laughs> yeah, it was wild. On him. It was man wild. <laughs> Got some air. Yeah. So, oh, so man. final thoughts. What are your final thoughts on on Sweet Girl? Uh, final thoughts. Um, I think that the movie is definitely watchable. Um, there are some spots you you will need to drink some coffee because it definitely gets slow in some areas. Yeah. Um, I don't think the movie should have been two hours. The movie probably could have been done in less time. Mm-hmm. Um, that's for sure. Yeah. Um. Uh. So overall, so so yeah, movie could have been done quicker. So some some areas of drags. The choreography for most of the fight scenes, knowing the twists, are very great because with the context of knowing that's not Jason fighting, it's his daughter, um, makes those scenes a lot more complex and enjoyable, um, for sure. So um, on a second viewing, you probably might enjoy it a bit more. Or just watching some fight scenes again, you'll probably enjoy it a bit more knowing the twist coming. Jason Momoa is a phenomenal actor. And I'm glad they gave him a great range to show his chops. I really felt him when he, when after his wife died and he broke down. I think that some of the most uh, emotion I've seen from him, um, and I believed it. So mm-hmm. good on him. Good on him. Uh, that was really good. And then um, overall, I mean, acting wise, I mean, pieces of shit were pieces of shit. You know, like they, they, <laughs> they played their role. You know, they were written the way they were. Overall, the movie, I say, was like, it was just okay. You know, it was okay. It was a, it was an okay movie. Some parts I did really enjoy, but it, nothing stood out to me as something that was like, oh, it's some, you know, the best movie of the summer. No, it's a one watch for me. Go back, watch the fight scenes later yeah. with the context, knowing that's not Jason Momoa. Um, it's watchable. It's fun. It's not as bad as uh, He-Man or Ragnarok. So... <laughs> On our scale of continuing of you know things that we watch, it's definitely above those two. Um, so I definitely would say it's worth the watch. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about you? What were you, Lord? What do you think? Um, I would say Dora the Explorer did a good job. Like she. Oh, that's who she was. <laughs> that's who she was. Oh, you know. I was, oh. The funny thing is, I was sitting on that the entire like forty minutes that like, we were talking about this movie. Oh, why is that? Like... There are so many <laughs> uh, so many uh, freaking. Boots jokes we could have made. Like, <laughs> what, like what if she showed up? Like, what if she showed up with a monkey? Swiper like, no like, swiping, so, bitch. <laughs> oh, what if she said that? Like, like, 
Yeah, yeah. So, oh uh, yeah. So, Isabella Merced played Dora the Explorer in the Dora the Explorer live action movie. Um, oh, what was it called? Like the Lost City of Gold or something like that. But anyway, um, yeah. So, Dora the Explorer did her thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think she was pretty good. I honestly, um, I think it would be cool to see her in like more like action stuff. Um, she's been in like a couple of other things, mostly as like. I mean, she's like, I think she's like, what, maybe like 20 years old? So she's she's pretty young. Um, 20 years old? Jesus. Yeah, she's 20 years old. I think she was like, uh, I think she was born in like 2000, 2001. Um, so she's either, she's like 19 or 20 years old. Um, but yeah, she's pretty young. Because, you know, you like know, I said, old. like I said, she was in the Dora the Explorer movie. As Dora the yeah. Explorer. Yeah, we, we are we are old. Dora, 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 the Explorer. Cla- grab your clock and knife and murder. <laughs> murder CEOs. Gotta get revenge on Big Pharma. <laughs> do, do Dora, you see Dora, the Dora, assassin? grab the blicky. <laughs> do you see the assassin? <laughs> Tell me, where do you see the assassin? Should I shoot this motherfucker? <laughs> Hey kids, should I take revenge on this CEO that let my mom die? <laughs> <laughs> but all in all, doing this one I did her thing. Um, yeah, I think I think the good thing was that it was convincing. Um, going from like Jason Momoa playing as her to her playing as Jason Momoa, which was. Um, yeah, I think that was kind of like the that was kind of like the underlying theme of the movie is like how much of like your parents, how much do parents like like flow into their kids and that was kind of like the big deal, you know, because it was like when she in those life and death situations, she became her father. And so and so I I feel like um uh Isabella uh, Merced did a, a a good job, pretty decent job at that. Um and yeah, I mean, it, it was fun. It was convincing. Uh, like once he got into it, um, I mean, I think I think Jason Moore was was he was he was good. Um, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say he was a phenomenal actor. I like Jason Moore as a person and as an actor. Um, I think he does. Uh, he definitely has the charisma, um, you know, of what he does. So I'm so I'm all for that. But I mean, all in all, it was a, it was a fun, it was a fairly fun watch. I did like the twist, um, not the twist of the politician because that that was clear, that was obvious to me um, from the beginning. I again, like I said, I missed some of the parts. The only thing that was really telling was that first fight scene when um, when quote unquote Jason Momoa is fighting the dudes. That was the only thing I was like the real tell. But I kind of like drifted in and out of consciousness for like the middle part of the movie because it, like you said, it kind of dragged after a while. Like those, um, like once it got into like them running away, I was very, um, like I was like, man, like it, this is kind of moving along. Like you said, I don't think it should have been two hours. Um, it, like a, a ninety-minute movie would have been solid. That would have sufficed. They're, they could have cut out a lot of slow stuff i mean it, especially when you realize that um interaction between dora and aquaman was very minor <laughs> like they had a lot of interaction in the beginning if throughout the movie but like after but you could t- you could cut off so much fat on that mm-hmm. and just focus on those two yeah like they know they tried to do a bigger overarching plot because if you think about karma. it the first part of the movie was 30 minutes the the like it was I, I feel like it was like 20 minutes it was 20 to 30 minutes the the moment the 20 to 30 minute mark was the moment with that her mom died and i think that was like when the, the credits rolled or it, i could be wrong but it started it, it at least felt like it because yeah, i was like felt- i was like that that beginning part was very long to me yeah i think it was close to 15 minutes but definitely felt longer than it should but it set up things, and that's and it's just like if you want to focus on the family aspect, focus on the family aspect. Leave out some of the um, big brain conspiracies, and just yeah. focus on a little girl 
getting revenge on a pharmaceutical company. Like yeah. we didn't have to know about the politician. We we did not do the subplot with the with the with the officer. Um and there's so much stuff that could have been cut out, I felt like. I mean like if you take Taken for example, Taken's a very simple story, not two hours long. It's um daughter's kidnapped or you have ex, ex special forces dude, dude has daughter, daughter gets kidnapped, ex special forces dude kills a lot of people get and then at the end gets daughter back. Very clear story. Yeah. Boom. And yeah. And, you know, if you want it more complicated, make a sequel, I guess, because that's what they did yeah. the sequel. They got much more in depth with who the terrorists were. I don't need a uh, Taken didn't need a segment on. I mean, they had a segment on who these terrorists were, but it was two minutes, not twenty five. Uh, yeah. You yeah. know, we have several conspiracies and politicians in our pocket. Here's a twist: the terrorist is actually. You know, actually, they did have a, a twist like that. There was again, a twist, but it wasn't. Minutes. But it wasn't like twenty minutes, and it was pretty. Right. It was a pretty straightforward twist. Like you meet this dude at the beginning, and then you see him again, like twenty, like twenty, thirty minutes later, and it's right. like, and yeah. So. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I feel like it was. Um, yeah, I feel like it was a. I think it was a. It was a fun movie. Um, I'd probably give it a three out of five. Um, you know, I don't know that I would watch it again having seen the, like, having seen it already. I might watch it again for maybe, like, some of the parts. It might be one that I watch, like, I don't know, like, ten years later, like, five, ten years later, something like that. Um, it's definitely not one of those... Cause you know how you have like certain action movies where you can like pop it in like every couple years, you know, like, yeah. yeah. Cause like I can do that with like point blank with like Frank Grillo and Anthony Mackie. I can do that with point blank with that. Yeah. Um, I, I can do with Judge, I can do with Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Yeah. 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 There are certain action movies where you can just sit down and like, man, this is like, this is dope. I love the way this was shot or something like that. Yeah. There's certain movies like that. Um, but I don't know that this is one of those just because it drags too much, you know? Um, I felt like there was just like way too much of a drag, and I feel like, like not ever, not all of it was necessary. It was like we got what we needed, and so, so yeah. But I will say, if you have not seen it, um, check it out. Um, it is on Netflix. Uh, it was a fun, it was a fun watch, and yeah, you know, if you're looking for a, a nice movie to pop in on a weekend, um, looking for a movie night. It's a, it's a it's a pretty solid feature, um, and I mean it's got Jason Momoa in it. What what you know? What more could you want? But um, I mean, there's, there's, there's probably way more that you could want, but you know. I mean, probably, but you know, <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I mean, Jason, Jason Momoa is a pretty chill dude, so like you know, like he. I have a beer with the guy. He strikes me as a much more kind of like chill and even killed. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. That's that's how he strikes me. Yeah, are they both like native? Not native, but like Earth. kind of like no. Uh, so like, like th- Islanders? Are they both like Islanders? Like kind of, yeah, kind of like Pacific Pacific Islander. Um, like I think so. I think that Dwayne the Rock Johnson, Dwayne Johnson is like Polynesian, I believe. Um, mm-hmm. and Jason Momoa is Hawaiian. I, believe, with those I two think. Together. I think. I'm not. I'm. Uh, don't quote me on that. I know Jason Momoa is Hawaiian. That I know. Um, yeah. Uh, Dwayne Johnson. I believe that his. It, I feel like his mother is Polynesian. His dad might be black. I don't know. His dad is black. I think so. Yeah. <clears throat> Cause like I remember seeing like the 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 picture of him with like curly hair like when he was when he was younger. Yeah, I remember that. Remember that. Would you ever would you ever shave your head? No, when not, you get older, not, uh, unless I was losing my hair. Hell no. Hell no. <laughs> yeah, there's there's no way that I would shave my head of my own volition. Um, <clears throat> I love hair, man. Like I love. Uh, yeah, I, I I love my hair. Um, I've got like the lots going see, on right the, the there. The prob- the problem is that like my hair, because of how you know how curly kinky my hair is, 
it like tangles like e- like easily. So like I've been wearing hats a lot to like protect it from the sun, and because it's a lot easier to just like throw a cap on and like go and walk around on campus. But um, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, I, I would never shave my hair, my head of my own volition. Um, if I was losing my hair, I'd be like, okay, it's time to let it go. But um, until then, but until, until then, then, no, I'm I'm holding on <laughs> to this for as long as I can, and I'm not gonna be one of those dudes because the problem is, you know, you 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 have those like dudes who are like, oh, I'm losing my hair, and so they like they they're like it's it's completely bald in the middle of their head, and oh. then and then they've got yeah. like hair along the the sides. It's especially weird when it's like really long hair along the side. <laughs> yeah, I never understood that look. It's just like just let it go. I'm like, yeah, like, just I'm like, f- just, just, just. my man, like you gotta chill. So <laughs> like, just go bald, my guy. Just yeah, do that. yeah. I'm like, just... no, I can't. <laughs> you can, you gonna have to do something different, my dude. Um, yeah. Um, to answer the question, um. So, uh, so I, so Jason, Momo, uh, so Jason Momoa is Hawaiian. Um, Dwayne Johnson, he grew up, uh, so his mother is, um, uh, so his dad is black, um, descendant from, um, a slave who escaped the plantation. So yeah, he's, he's black. Um. Yeah, his dad was black Nova Scotian. He, he is some. His mother is Samoan. Yeah, so Polynesian. That's hype. So yeah. I didn't move with these two together. Just this Islander to Island. I feel like the, I Island. feel like I feel like Jason Momoa and Dwayne Dwayne Johnson because they both just have a lot of charisma. You know. Right. So I, like. I so the- I would. I feel like that. That could be a fun movie. That could also be a, a bad, like... They could also not have good chemistry. Well, what they could do... What they could do... If they could either do a buddy cop movie... Where they kind of play off each other... Or one could be a hero, one could be the villain. I don't know who that would be... And they'd have to really worry about the screen time. Yeah. Um, but I would watch fun. a buddy cop movie with Jason Momoa and Dwayne Johnson. Cause like yeah, you know like that. have Dwayne Johnson to be kind of like the by the books type of guy, Jason Momoa is probably like the, the more street type of guy. He's kind of like more rougher around the edges. Like, like I could I I would watch a movie like that. I would you, see you heard it here. I would see Netflix that. pay us money. Netflix give us a deal. Shoot, I, I will write, write you the like script. That. I always I, wanted I, to I write would... a I always wanted to write a, like a buddy a buddy cop flick. That would be fun. Yeah, hire us Netflix, green light us, <laughs> and give us millions of dollars to have these two. And I mean, like honestly, Look, the movie would it, do really well anyway. I can, we have I can promise you. I can promise you, Netflix. If you let somebody, if you paid for Record of Ragnarok, I can guarantee you <laughs> that we can make something more enjoyable than that. <laughs> Look, but, uh, here's here's a good question for you. Who do you want to direct it, or would you direct it? I probably I, I'm I'm not experienced enough to direct it, but I think that in terms of like a director, um, honestly, uh, you know, point blank with uh, with Frank Grillo with Anthony and Anthony Mackie, yeah, um, Joe Lynch, I think he did a pretty good job in that one. Um, yeah, I I really like his directorial style from the, in, in that. Um, because he's done he's done a number of like different of of movies kind of along, uh, you know, along those lines. Um, yeah, and yeah, I mean, I would be I would be cool with that. I like that. Like, <laughs> I like that. Like that. Yeah. It's, I mean, it depends what kind of movie you want. Like, got Buddy Cop. Let's, let's make it a horror film. Let's bring in James Wan, um, or we can make it something super serious um, while it's still Buddy Cop and bring in Martin Scorsese. 
you know, it's got some funny Hell moments, not. but uh, no, I, I would never, you, I, I would never want Martin know. Scorsese to direct anything that, <laughs> even if like, bro, even if it was like, even if Martin Scorsese would come to me, which he never would, um, like I would, I, I wouldn't want it. Like I love Scor, you gotta understand, I love Martin Scorsese movies, but I absolutely despise like Martin Scorsese's kind of like demeanor because I just hate I just hate elitism I, I just really hate elitism like I can respect you being an auteur and I can respect you not liking something but just like the way that people that that like he like holds himself like above like, yes, everyone else yes this isn't this isn't a real movie it's blah 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 like bitch it's on a film ain't it <laughs> bitch is in a theater Get him. Get him. No, I'm like, I, I I could go in on Martin Scorsese if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. They did <laughs> they did uh they did Anthony Anderson dirty as hell in uh in uh, the departed. <laughs> <laughs> like I appreciate it. I, I and I, I'm I'm a fan of uh I'm I'm a I'm a big Anthony Anderson fan. He's a he's a cool dude. <laughs> But they did him dirty, man. <laughs> they did him dirty as hell. My man, my man showed up with like a my man showed up with like a donut and got shot. Like that's. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh goodness. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. That's. Oh, uh, we got we got to have a Scorsese dish. Uh, one of we, these one of these episodes. We, we need to do we need to do one because I, cause but, I can go off I can go off on because like his last movie Irishman I felt was pretentious as hell. It was um, super pretentious, bro. I, was, I think the I wild like, thing the uh, I will I and I will I'm willing to die on this hill. But the moment that he used the same like de aging techniques that they used in. Uh, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe on his movie was the moment he lost all credibility to me. Because how are you going to be like, oh yeah, this isn't real movie, this isn't real cinema, blah, 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 and then use the techniques that they pioneered in, right. in your movie to make quote-unquote real cinema. Get out of here, bro. Get out of here, man. Shut and up. he could have hired, he could have hired, you know, anyone, he could have hired other people besides Joe Pesci and uh, Robert De Niro. Um, he could have hired, you know, younger actors that probably need work. You know, um, there's a lot of things he could have done. But that movie, no, especially I, I don't, I don't care about the de aging part of it. I just, it's just the fact that he used that after like criticizing the movies that made that happen. It, yeah. yeah, like 100. percent It's like when people diss Star Wars, uh, the Clone Wars because it's a CGI mess, mm -hmm. um, but then love Marvel Endgame. Um, uh, yeah, they love Avengers Endgame or any Marvel movie where they go heavy on the CGI. And I'm just like, yeah. did y'all forget that this is already here? Yeah, yeah so yeah. people like that tend, on, I tend to I tend to call people out when they do that. It's like, oh yeah, Star Wars, Clone Wars, Star Wars Render Sith was just a mess. Yeah, but I loved Endgame. Okay, you can you can sit down, sir. Yeah. You can sit down. Yeah. There's, get there's the, no reason for all that. Anyway, yeah. man, uh, this has been Lord Third, your number one trash player, aka the Garbage Goat, aka Jackie's Bay, aka fuck you, Martin Scorsese. Um, and I'm here with he's here with the King of Dreams, looking so clean and mean, looking so sweet. Uh, you know, you know what? I'm just looking clean and mean with my ten rings. You know what? I'm just gonna be me, and we are the Sly Guys, delivering the hottest of hot takes on all things nerdy in culture and we are out peace it really is hard it really is hard to rhyme something with sweet with sweet girl without sounding <laughs> like a creep like i just gotta say that like it's, i know that's, this is like the outro but you guys gotta understand that was it's really hard to rhyme with something with sweet with sweet girl so you know yeah, we're out like just don't <laughs> just, just don't. don't do it just don't do it just don't do it just just don't do it but yeah we are out though see you guys next time peace <laughs>